Hello there and welcome back. This is Jennifer McGuire. So a few weeks ago, I shared a video with lots of masking tips. I'll link to it here. If you didn't see it, be sure to check that out. Well, today I'm back with more masking tips and variations on the techniques that I shared there. I'm going to use these masking techniques to create one layer cards where I creatively combine stamps together to create a new look, something very personal to the recipients I'll send them to. Now I will be using the negative space of masks, the masks themselves, and a combination of both to create these unique looks. Now the cards today are using the newest My Monthly Hero Arts Kit for August. It has this large six by eight stamp set the embellishments, coordinating dies, and that large die that you see on the bottom that covers the front of a note card. Now I had to film this before going on vacation, so I only had the stamps to use, so I'll focus on that stamp set. Now the fun thing about this large stamp set is the coffee mugs, the sentiments, and the little accents that you can use them with are all separate. So you can decorate these mugs however you want. You can even stamp the sentiments on them. They're perfectly sized. Another fun thing about this set is that they could be used for coffee, tea, or hot chocolate. Now because these mugs are plain, so you can add anything you want to them, I'm going to use creative masking to decorate the mugs to make them all look different. For my masking, I'm using Avery removable adhesive sheets. These are eight and a half by 11 removable labels that are perfect for masking. It has the right amount of stick to be able to put it on your project and remove it easily. So I will cut these down into smaller workable pieces, but this is what I've been reaching for most often for masking, but you could use any masking paper or even post-it notes. So I cut a bunch of those sheets down into four by four squares. You could do whatever size you want. Now you could do one layer of this masking paper but I'm actually going to double up my layer so that my mask is thicker. The only reason I'm doubling up my mask is because I plan to use my masks over and over again to make multiple cards. This will ensure ink doesn't bleed through the layers, but I've never had bleed through with these particular label sheets. However, I didn't want to take a chance. Another thing you can do is put clear packing tape on top of your mask but sometimes I tend to smear the ink then. It does hold up longer, but I tend to smear. You would just have to be careful. But today I'm using doubled up masking sheets. Okay, so now I'm going to stamp my different mugs right in the center of my mask with Hero Arts Intense Black ink. You could use any ink for this. Next, I will cut these out. I'm going to cut right up to the stamp line so that it's a perfect mask with no trim. So I cut right straight into the image, right from the edge of the paper, and then I'll cut around the image. I'm going to try to keep the negative space as nice as I can, just with that one cut along the side, so that I can use both the negative space of the mask, that's the outside area, and the mask itself. By having both masks, you can do so many more fun things with masking on one layer cards, as I'll show you today. I'll be able to reuse these masks over and over and keep them with the stamp set. You may notice that I reach for clean masks each time. When creating multiple cards in today's video, the only reason I did that was to keep everything looking clean for you as a viewer, but I would reuse these masks over and over in real life. So I went ahead and cut out a bunch of these different mugs and I also have their negative space. These are pretty easy to cut out because they're basic shapes. I even cut out some whipped cream so that we can add that to the top of some of our mugs. Now, if you don't like to fussy cut, you can use the coordinating dies for masking. And that video I mentioned that's linked to here shows how to do that. Okay, next I have a white note card. This is three and a half by five. And I'm stamping the sentiment and this little cup from that Hero Arts My Monthly Hero Kit. I'm using my Misty stamping tool simply because it's very helpful for masking. I place the whipped cream mask underneath the stamp so that we can mask off the area where the whipped cream will be. You could do this in different orders by stamping the whipped cream first, but I wanted to make sure that I had room for my sentiment on the bottom. 
So I stamped that with Hero Arts Black Intense Ink, which is a Copic friendly ink. I can now remove the little mask for the whipped cream and add the whipped cream stamp in place and stamp that with the same ink. So you can see how I have a custom look to this cup, but it really looks, has a nice finished look to it thanks to the masking. Next, I'm putting the mask over the cup and the whipped cream to completely mask off that image. I'm removing the mat from my Misty because I plan to stamp on this with a cling stamp. So this is the Hero Arts Floral Doily Stamp. It's a great new background stamp. And I'm placing it over the corner of our card. I'll stamp this with Hero Arts Soft Pool Ink. And I don't have to worry about my cup getting any of the stamping on top because we have it masked. Now I decided I wanted that to be a little bit darker, so I'm going to double stamp it. That's one of the advantages of using a stamping tool. I'm now using a craft knife to carefully remove those masks, which I can reuse again. Now I'm taking the negative space of the mask and putting it right around our cup. I want to stamp the same stamp with black ink, but only on the front part of this cup, not the rest of it. So I'll have to take my little cup mask and cut from it the top of the cup, the handle, and the saucer, and place that right over our stamped image. So basically, I'm masking everything off except the front of that cup. Now you could stamp over the entire thing and have your pattern on the saucer and on the handle, but I really just wanted the front of the cup only to have the stamping. So here I'm placing the mask over the little plate on the bottom. And then I also need to put a little masking paper over there on the left, just a strip of masking paper, just so I don't stamp on my card. Now this stamp is in the exact same place as it was before, but this time I'm stamping with the black ink. I'm going to stamp this a few times because I want it to be super dark and kind of uh, heavier than the stamp originally intended. And then I will have my cup masked to have the same pattern as the background. And in fact, the pattern lines up with the background because we didn't move our stamp. So here you can see how I creatively use the mask and the negative space of the mask together to create this cool look. Now I did some coloring on this with Copic markers. I'm gonna skip through this because I didn't do anything fancy, but I did include the colors I used there at the top of the screen. You could color this however you wanted with watercolor, colored pencils, any type of markers. I then added shimmer to the whipped cream for a little bit of sparkle. Now you have a few options for a coordinating envelope. This is a Hero Arts pool envelope, and I'm placing that same floral doily stamp right along the flap of the envelope, and I'm stamping that with Tide Pool ink. That way the envelope matches the card perfectly. However, that envelope is bigger than our card. Remember, my card is a little bit smaller. You can use a smaller envelope, like that craft one where I stamped the same image. But if you don't have smaller envelopes, that's okay. Just use the bigger envelope and put the smaller card inside. So here's a closer look at that masking effect that we get. We get a really great one layer look where the pattern is continuous and all we had to do was a bit of masking. And remember, we started with a plain cup and we decorated it ourselves to get a custom look. Now the cardstock that I use for this note card is Nina Classic Crest Solar White 110 pound cardstock. A heavier weight cardstock like that is better for one layer cards so it's more substantial and the coloring doesn't leak through the inside as much. Okay, now it's time to do another masked card. This one I did some fun masking to create a personalized look for who this card is going to. And I also kind of stepped up the masking a bit. The sentiment on this one is from the new Hero Arts Spill the Tea stamp set that you see here and I'll be using the cups from the kit that I showed you earlier. I have a four and a quarter by five and a half inch top folding white note card. And here I'm using the cup mask to plan where I'm going to stamp the images. Instead of using the two stamps and trying to arrange them and they might be dirty, I can just use the mask to plan where my stamping will be. I want to put whipped cream on the top of the mug so I'm putting the whipped cream uh, mask right on top. 
making sure I overlap with the mask below. Now I can take my mug stamp and just line it up with the mask. That way I know it's positioned perfectly with that little whipped cream and right where I want it to be on the card. I'll now close the misty doors, remove the cup mask. I can keep the whipped cream there and then stamp my images. Now I can say there are many ways to do masking, different orders for using the masks and the stamps. Just do what works best for you. Start with a simple mask card to get the hang of things. Then you can step it up a little bit. Okay, so now I've stamped the whipped cream on top of the mug and it's time to stamp the other cup, but that does overlap with this mug. So I'm putting the mask over the mug and I'm using the cup mask just to kind of plan where I want to put the stamp because you can see my stamp is inky. So once I have it in place, I can put the stamp on top of it, close the door on my Misty, and I know it's positioned where I want it. I'll again stamp this with the same black ink, and then we can remove our mask and we'll have a nice overlap look. Now you could put these next to each other without any masking, but I tell you, there's something really finished and complete about layering these images by having the bit of overlapping that you do with masking. Next, I want to stamp in the background, but not overlap with my coffee images. So I'm using the mask to cover the coffee completely. So I'm covering the two cups and the whipped cream. I remove the mat from my Misty because I'm again going to use a background cling stamp. This is the Hero Arts Scribble Background Stamp, and I'll be stamping it on top of my entire card with Hero Arts Soft Vanilla Ink, which is one of my favorite soft colors that seems to go with everything. I wanted it to show up a bit more, so I decided to stamp it again. By stamping two or three times right on top of each other, you can get a darker color. Now it's time to decorate the mugs themselves. On one mug, I'm going to use this dog from the Hero Arts Headline Message stamp set. I thought that looked like my foxy dog. Now on the other mug, I'll be using the cat from this Hero Arts Kit T stamp and die set. This little stamp set comes with the coordinating dies also, but I'm just using that stamp. I thought I could make that look like Christina Werner's cat. She has two that kind of look the same, so we're just going to go with one cat on her mug today. I'll be sending this card to her. So now I can remove the mask and it's time to use the negative space. So this is the mask negative space. I'll put it over the mug and then I'll place the cat so that most of the face ends up on the front of the mug. I will again stamp this with black Hero Arts Intense Ink and I'll actually double stamp it just to make the lines a bit heavier to stand out more. So there we have Christina's kitty on the little mug. Now for the other mug, we'll add the dog for my little foxy. I'll put the negative space around it. And remember to put the mask of the mug down also because we don't want to overlap with that handle there on the left. I also only want to stamp on the front face of this cup, not on the bottom or the handle. So I took the mask of the cup, cut off the bottom and the handle, and I'm putting that onto my card so that only the face is exposed. There I can stamp that cute little dog so that most of his face shows on the front of the cup. And we have our cat mug and our dog mug. So yes, this masking does take a little bit of time. This card took me just a little under an hour. But for me, an hour is record setting. I usually take a lot longer because I do other techniques. And I really feel this was worth it because I end up with a personalized card that's one layer and will go through the mail nicely. So I added some basic Copic coloring to the mugs, and here you can see the completed card. I also stamped the background stamp on the flap of the envelope so that it would match. So I took those basic cup images and added something fun to them. So look at your stamps, look at any outline images you may have. You may be able to personalize them by combining them with other stamps and masking. Okay, now here is the big masking card where I have five different mugs where I personalized each of them for some friends of mine. I went on a girls weekend and I wanted to send this to the person who hosted us. So I put a mug for each of us that were there. Okay, so I wanted to show you how to kind of plan out masking. Remember, I talked about this in my last video. Check that out if you haven't. But here's another option. 
I have a four and a quarter by five and a half inch white note card inside of my Misty. And I'm using the mask again to plan where I'm going to do stamping. I could use the stamps themselves to lay out like this, but it's hard when they overlap and my stamps are often dirty. So by using the mask, I can very easily and safely line up my images. Now for today's card, I decided to line up these masks, then take a picture with my cell phone so that I knew where I wanted everything to be. Then I could remove them all and start my stamping. There are other ways to do this. Again, that video shows another way, but this is what made sense to me today. Now I'm starting with the images that I want in the front most. So that's this little cup and this bigger cup. I line the stamps up with the mass, and then I can remove all of the mass from my paper, except for the little whipped cream ones. I want whipped cream on the top of these cups, so I need to leave those masks in place. Now I do find that this Avery label that I'm using for masks is great for sticking down and removing multiple times. So these masks will last you a while. So now I'm stamping these two cups with black ink. When I do masking, I like to double stamp just to make sure the ink gets right up against the edge of the mask. Okay, so now I need to cover these two cups and start adding the other cups behind them. One way to save time when doing this is to stamp multiple images at once like I'm doing here. Another thing you could do is make many of these cards at once. Since I have the masks already created and I have the stamps in my stamping tool, I could just switch out the card and stamp it on several cards at once. Here I'm adding a little straw and also the whipped cream to the top of the cups. So you can see each of these simple cups is a palette where I can add my little personalized images and the letters. At this point, I could put masks over all of my cups and stamp something over the background, but I was afraid that was too busy. So instead, I'm only stamping on the cups themselves. Starting with the cup in the middle, I'll cut the little plate and handle off and place that onto our card along with that negative space. This will make it so that only the front of the cup is exposed and we can stamp onto that. Now for the letter on each of the cups to stand for each of my friends, I'm using the Hero Arts Alphabet Soup stamp set. Any alphabet stamp set should work for this or you could even write the letter in by hand. So on this cup, I'm stamping a K and then I'll stamp the dog and this will be for my friend Kathy. So I've stamped that and now we can move on to the next cup just removing the mask and seeing how it was perfectly positioned just on the front of that cup. Next, I'm moving to the tall cup. This one will be for me. I like flowers a lot, so I thought I would use a flower image. Again, I'm cutting off part of the mask to mask off the bottom of the cup and the handle and the top so that we don't have overlap with that. So here I have a flower from the Hero Arts Your Beautiful stamp set, which I'll show you in a moment. I'll stamp that with the black ink remove the mask, and then we can move on to the other cups. So I repeated the process for each of the cups, making sure just to stamp on the face of the mugs. And I used an image that kind of matched the personality of each of my friends, just to make it a little more fun, and I added their initial. So next I did some coloring on this. I didn't do anything fancy, but I used my Copic markers because I find that's what's fastest for me, but any coloring method would work. So here is the completed card. We have Christina Werner with the little kitty cat on the left. Gina Kay, she is the, has the most sunshiny personality, so I thought that was perfect for her. We have Kathy Rakusen in the center with the dog. I'm the mug there with the flower and the J. And the unicorn mug with the H is for Heidi Kral. She's the owner of Simon Says Stamp, and she just has such a bright, fun personality that I thought the unicorn was perfect. So there you have a way to take some of your simple outline stamps, combine them with other stamps with some creative masking to create personalized cards. I hope you'll try some of these tips. Again, start simple like I did in this video and kind of work your way up to the more advanced masking. I appreciate you watching this video so very much. I link to the supplies that I use below in my YouTube description. In the middle are a couple other masking videos that you might like. If you haven't done so, hit subscribe so you can see other videos. I thank you for stopping by. We'll see you soon and have a great week.